men against my gun are not very good odds. But you won't stop me from finding this girl's brother. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin, uh, you bags all in carriage. Thank you, hey boy. Hey, Missy Fulton bags in carriage also. She's waiting for you. Ooh, she's very prompt. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, so very pretty. You be gone a long time, Mr. Paladin? In three weeks, maybe. Long enough to see Marietta to heal a bend. Oh, heal a bend? Arizona Territory. Marietta believes her brother is there. Believes? Oh, she don't know? Well, they've been separated for years, hey boy. They lost all contact with each other. Ah, you take her to find out. That's right. Well, sir, from where she looks at you, I think she's very happy you are one to take off. Now, hey, boy, you're letting your imagination run away with you. <laughs> yes, sir. Believe me, Miss Fulton is interested in only one thing, finding her brother. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, now, when you get to uh, heal her, then, then she'll be very happy. Perhaps, if it really is her brother. <laughs> Marietta Fulton was a beautiful and charming young lady. She and her brother, Marlon Fulton, had been separated since their parents' death when both were hardly more than babies. Marlon had been left with an uncle in California. Marietta had been sent to live with an aunt in Pittsburgh. All contact between the two had been severed. And only after her aunt's death had Marietta really tried to find her brother. She had hired the Pinkerton Agency to aid in the search and they finally discovered a man named Marlon Fulton living in Gila Bend. However, the man denied being her brother. In fact, denied having a sister at all. Nevertheless, Marietta came west and hired me to take her to Gila Bend to be completely sure. You think this trip is a wild goose chase, don't you, Mr. Paladin? I'm afraid I do. The man denies having a sister. You said you'd written several letters, which you didn't even answer. But this is the only Marlon Fulton that could be found in the West. It just has to be him. Well, I hope you're right. Somehow I just know it is. I can feel it. <laughs> well, far be it for me to dispute a woman's intuition. How much longer do we have? Oh, about an hour or two. Oh, these stagecoaches aren't the most comfortable things in the world. No, I know. Get down. What is it? What happened? Wait a minute. Outlaws. They blocked the road. Oh. Well, what do we do? Just be quiet. We'll see. Driver, throw that strong box down. I don't know who you are, mister, but you sure held up the wrong stage. I got no strong box. Better be telling the truth. All right, everybody inside, get out. You stay here. Paladin, I'm frightened. Come on, now, move. Just be still now. Keep your mouth shut, mister. You can step right on out of here, ma'am, so Duke can get a good look at you. Come on now. Paladin. You better step out. Now you're using some sense, mister. Hey, Duke. Ain't she pretty, though? She sure is, pretty. It's been a long time since I've seen a girl dressed up so fancy, looking so pretty as you, ma'am. Hey, Duke, I got me an idea. Let's take her with us. 
Hey, maybe that ain't such a bad idea, Duke. He might be worth something, too. Robbing a stage is one thing. Kidnapping is another. Now, I warn you. Don't take that girl. Can I hit him, Duke? Why, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you are talking again, mister. Next time you wait till someone asks you. You dirty punk catch! Watch out, Duke! <laughs> Gone for a gun, lady. You'll hang for this. You'll hang. Uh, uh. Hey, hey, Duke, she fainted. Hey. Pick her up and let's go. No. No, you won't. Look out, he's got a derringer. You won't be a hero anymore. <laughs> no, sir, not ever. Uh, yeah. uh, Good to see you coming around, son. Yeah. Afraid I'd lost you. Who are you? And I'm Doc Jonas. You're in my office. Huh? Office? In he'd have been. Sheriff Tom found you laying in the dust when he went looking for the stage. Brought you and that dead driver back with him. You're lucky, son. If that bullet had been a fraction of an inch lower, you'd have had a hole through your head. Instead of that crease in it. How, how, how long have I been here? Oh, six, seven hours. <laughs> Marietta. Got to get Marietta. No, no, you... You just lie back there and take it easy. I, I tell you, I, I've got to find her. Those men have got her. Here, Tom has already figured out there was a woman on that stage, and he figured she was kidnapped, too. You've been looking for them outlaws for hours now, so it won't do you no good to try and get up. Besides, you'd only fall on your face if you did. Yeah. Sheriff Tom's a good man. He doesn't take the outlaws and kidnapping, not at all. You'll find him. I hope you're right, Doc. I sure hope you're right. The next morning, Doc Jonas put a new bandage on my head and reluctantly let me get up. The room spun for a few minutes and then settled down, and I felt my strength slowly returning. You're a fool, son. You should stay down at least another day or two. I can't, Doc. You can, too. Going to open up that head wound again, then you'll be down for good. Now that's something I have to chance. There isn't any sense to it. How do you expect. Hey, Doc. Doc, open up. That sounds like the sheriff. I got the girl. Bring her in here. Marietta. Now, put her down here. Easy now. Oh, no. no, please. Oh, please, don't. Where did you find her? In a line cabin. He left her there to die. Marietta. She's been hurt. She's been hurt real bad. You two get in the other room. Go on now, get. Sure, Doc. Come on, mister. Dirty scum. Dirty, filthy scum. Will you find them, Sheriff? Ah. I had to get her back. But I'm going to find him. It was the last thing I do in my life. Oh, I tell you, mister, it's time I'm like this. I feel like throwing my badge away. I was responsible for that girl, Sheriff. And I let those three vultures get her. Three of them, huh? Yeah, I kind of figured as much by their tracks. Who was they, do you know? I know what they called each other. And I know their faces. That's something I'll never forget. Well, then you tell me. You're the only witness to what happened. That's right, Sheriff. That's one thing those three don't know. They think I'm dead. So maybe, just maybe, they'll come into Gila Bend sometime. I want you to tell me their names and what they look like. Oh. How is she, Doc? You are too late, Sheriff Tom. She's dead. Oh, some rotten, dirty skunks. Now, mister, you tell me what their names are. 
Not now, Sheriff. Not now. I'm not wearing a badge. And I'm going after those men myself. Marietta was buried in the cemetery outside the squalid little town of Gila Bend. Far from Pittsburgh. Far from the laughter and delicate way of life she had known. For two days, I tried to trail the outlaws who had murdered her, but too much time had passed and the trail was cold. As it turned out, I could have saved myself a lot of trouble because when I got back to town, I found two of the men I was looking for playing poker in the saloon. Peach and Ferdy. I tell you, it just don't seem right, Keach. No matter how good a hand I get, you always win. I don't have a friction on Freddy. I'm just lucky, that's all. There'll come a time when I... Hey, what's the matter with you? You look like you've seen a ghost. Maybe he did. What? Hey, Keach, he's supposed to be dead. Shut up, Freddy. Now, both of you, put your guns on the table. Slow and easy. Uh, hey, what's biting you, mister? Just do what I said. Well, well I ain't going to argue. He got a gun pointed at me. But I, I still don't... Shut up! The girl died. The one you took off the stage. Well, I... What's that got to do with us? Get up from the table. Both of you. I'm going to show you what it has to do with you. Uh, you can't shoot us, mister. There's a law. I'm not going to shoot you. I'm going to beat you. There. My gun's on the table. There's two of us, and there's only one of you. And that's just the way I want it. You'll be dead sure enough this time, Mr. Hey, Freddy. Oh, you can't take both of us, miss, and I'll get you. Now you... Ferdy, get up. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, mister. You took all the fight out of me. I don't want no more. I said you get up. Please don't. Where is he, Ferdy? Where's Duke? Where is Duke? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. He's in his hotel room. That's where. Now, what's going on here? It's all a commotion about. Sheriff, these are two of the men we've been looking for. I know these men. Ferdy and Keach. Now, there's just one more. Yeah. You don't need to tell me who he is, neither. These two always ran around with the same man. A guy named Fulton. Duke Fulton? That's right. Three of them. They've been living in Gila Bend for, oh, eight, nine months now. Always was troublemakers. <laughs> And now, here's a message from the watchmakers of Switzerland. Win a fabulous vacation for two in beautiful Switzerland. Enter the Swiss Vacation Contest. Pick up a free entry blank at a jewelry store or other store that sells quality watches. Then, in 25 words or less, complete this statement. A quality watch is the best value because there are 1,000 prizes. First prize, a 21-day vacation for two in Switzerland. Visit many colorful places. All expenses paid for two people, plus $500 extra spending money. Enter the Swiss Vacation Contest today. Free entry blanks at your jewelry store. Something to startle you, Duke? Oh, no, no. Why should it? This him, Paladin? That's him. You're under arrest, Duke. Arrest? Oh, what's this all about? What for? A murder and a stage driver and a girl. A girl? Well, the girl wasn't you. 
She died shortly after the sheriff got her back to town. Well, what's that got to do with me? Everything. Maybe even more than you think. What do you mean? A few months ago, you were contacted by some Pinkerton men. About a sister you were supposed to have, weren't you? Oh. How do you know so much? Work you, Marlon. What? So what? A little while later, you got some letters from that girl. A girl by the name of Marietta Fulton. Well, what's that got to do with... with There's just one thing I want to know, Marlon. That girl from Pittsburgh. Was she your sister or not? So what if she is my sister? I haven't seen her since I was five, anyways. I don't want nothing to do with it. That girl you took off the stage. Her name was Marietta Fulton. Mary... My sister? That's right. Your sister. You think about that. You think about it when you're hanging from the end of a rope. Ah, Mr. Paladin, good to see you home again. You're gone a long time. Yes, hey, boy. I was... Gone a whole lifetime. Oh, you have a sad heart. Time will heal it, eh, boy? Are there any messages for me? Oh, no, sir. Uh, no messages, buddy. Young lady asked for you a little while ago. Oh, very pretty. Uh, no, just tell her I'm not in, hey, boy. Oh, too late for that. Here she comes, see? Oh, for... Oh, well, why didn't you tell me, hey, boy? I did. The clerk at the desk said that you were Mr. Paladin. Why, yes. Well, Mr. Paladin, I'm so happy to meet you. My name is Darla Wood. Miss Wood? My uncle knows you. You're... Uh, Colonel Orville Wood. Colonel... Oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, My uncle told me if I ever came to San Francisco to be show and look you up. Well, well, I'm, I'm very flattered. Um, perhaps we can have, uh, dinner together and discuss your... Uncle, further? Why, oh, Mr. Paladin, I think that would be perfectly delightful. Wonderful. My arm? Oh, thank you. Uh, tell me, is uh, this your first trip to the West? Why, yes, it is, and I'm just thrilled by it. Oh, he is so, Mr. Paladin. It is good to see you home again. Sam Rolfe is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. 